So what I like to do first is put on a shading layer and I try not to use a pure black for shading. I try to have some sort of saturated color in there. Um, if you're using traditional mediums, you'd take a saturated color, add black, and then mix that to your original color or however you do it depending on the medium you're using. That's a pretty basic idea. And then when I'm done with the, the first layer, I try to add a second layer of shading. With the first layer, I try to keep things cell shaded and then I, after I'm done cell shading, I go back and I blur everything just because that's how I, I like my style to be. And then for the second shading layer, I might just use a brush pen instead of the regular standard pencil pen it's just so it's a little softer and I still go back and I blur everything. I try to make sure that my highlights and lights are softer than my shadows. As a general rule, the harsher the, the highlights, the harsher the shadows, but for me the way I see things, almost always the light's going to be a little softer than the shadows are. Once you're done with your first layer of lighting, you're going to want to do backlighting. You can do another layer of regular lighting, like the, the color I have here, just to accentuate. Um, but I'm, I'm going to keep this pretty simple. I usually try to choose something that's either opposite of this, like if you pull up the color wheel, pull up the color you used, and then go over here. Or if I have some type of background, I, I use the background obviously to see what sort of colors might reflect um, from the ground back up onto the figure. Like if the ground was red, like a red brick tile or something like that, you'd want to have a reddish orange for your backlight because any light reflecting off of that is gonna pick up some of the color. But I'm just going to use this blue because it's opposite of, of the yellow on the color wheel. And that usually is a good idea to use complementary or tertiary or whatever kind of color combo, color theory thing you want to use. And um, I even go like in the darkest parts of the shading. I'll add a little bit. Because this is reflecting from underneath so any parts that actually are going to be very darkly shaded are going to have a high concentration of backlight because again the backlight comes from the ground or surrounding objects not just from directly above. Quickly brush this in. Again, this is super messy, but I just want to give you guys a quick tutorial on how I shade because I know a lot of people have asked me and I figured I'll just make a tutorial. Okay. And then I, I blur all my lighting. I blur pretty much everything. Again, that's a style choice. You can use this with cell shading or painterly shading. And then when you're done with that, you can add any harsh lighting or shadows that you might want to add. Like if you've got a really bright yellow street lamp or something right above here, you could add extra light to this area to help accentuate that. If you don't have a background, um, it can be kind of tricky to know where to shade just because you're going off of uh, nothing really. You're kind of just making things up as you go. There you go. So that's like a, a simple shading tutorial with layers. The eyedropper test. Um, it's called the eyedropper test because you go to your eyedropper and then you select kind of randomly anywhere 
and if you can select randomly anywhere and that color is different from the original color, like if I turn off all the shading layers and then watch this box when I drop or this color, see how it's changed? If that color that you originally eye dropped is different from your base color, that usually means you're good. If you can just kind of randomly go like that and it's different from the original color. Um, I think the only areas I could possibly eye drop for the original are over here. Um, I think there's a little bit of a section right there. The ears I kind of didn't really shade. And probably about right here with the horns. But if I, if I was going to take my time, I would go back and I would reshade those areas, add more depth to them so that they're not as flat. If you look at reference photos and in real life, the color is always in some sort of gradient. There's never one flat area because even if you were to draw a square or something, you'd have gradients on the sides. The light goes from one section to another. Avoid hugging the lines. Some people will shade, especially if they want to go in a more cartoon art style and they're newer to art. A lot of times they will shade like this, where they just, they literally only go where the lines are. And I kind of seen it a lot. So I'd like to just, you know, address it real fast. Although it can be nice for a quick shading, like if you just want a flat color piece to have something else to add interest to the eye. As I said earlier, like if you want to use just quick shading, I suppose it's all right. But it doesn't give you a lot of depth for a fully shaded piece because you only want to go where the lines are. And a lot of those cartoon or simplified styles where I see it on um, with new artists, don't have a lot of lines either, so they pretty much just stuck to the edges of their drawing because they usually only have an edge down um, and usually a knee, a shoulder, and a cheek is all they really have. They don't usually have a lot of these lines in here. But if you did the eyedropper test on this, like you could pick out the color immediately, like just kind of randomly clicking. You see, like this is just the original color and it doesn't really add a whole lot of depth to the piece. So like compare this where you stick very closely to the lines to something like this. And you can see this one has a lot more depth. So next thing I wanna talk about is how to have some quick cell shading for if you just want a flat color piece to have a little bit more interest and you don't want to put in the time to completely shade everything but you don't want it to be completely flat and uh, a tip for that is a one selection cell shade so you take your lasso tool or if you're using traditional artwork your pretend lasso tool aka your, your mind as you map it out and you kind of try and make one selection. And you can hit shift on Psy to add more to your selection. And you try to keep it all in one selection. And this just helps it not become overcomplicated. Again, if you want this for very simple shading or just to practice shading, or to test out lightings if you want to do a thumbnail, stuff like that. Like if you can keep it all in one selection to where if you hit the bucket tool, it will fill it all up in one go. That's a, it's a pretty good tip. Here I have three separate selections, but if the bulk of your shading is just in one selection, it usually helps do something really quick that also can look nice and simple so that you don't have to spend hours shading something that you don't want to be a completed piece or anything like that. 
if I take my bucket tool, we'll just use the color I currently have. Mix it up a little. And I have a couple little offshoots that didn't quite get filled in, but there we go, see? And then you can blur that, or if you did it neater than I did, you can just leave it as is. And it adds something to the piece without being um, overly complicated. Thank you all so much for watching. If you guys want any more tutorials or anything else like this, let me know. Hopefully I didn't mumble too much. I kind of am a mumbler. And hopefully I didn't speak too weird. I don't know, this is my first time recording audio for a video. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it was useful and I hope it didn't go on for too long.